A few days ago, some of the pro members shared a website and requested a breakdown of the animation used on its landing page. As always, I prioritize member requests and try to cover them whenever I feel confident I can build something solid. The animation in question was the striking image trail effect where images follow the cursor and reveal themselves through a clean, staggered mask transition, almost like a Venetian blind opening frame by frame. While we have explored image trail animations before, I hadn't built anything quite like this. So naturally, I decided to take on the challenge and see if I could replicate it. After a few hours of experimentation, I was able to recreate the exact image trail complete with the same smooth motion and masking animation from the original website. In this video, I'll walk you through how to build this animated image trail experience using Next.js. We'll be using three core techniques to bring it to life. First, a clip path based masking system with staggered transitions to create that Venetian blind reveal. Second, cursor position interpolation to give the trail a smooth sliding motion. And finally, we'll combine CSS transitions with request animation frame to orchestrate the entire animation sequence seamlessly. If you enjoy this kind of work, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects along with a new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. I've also created a vanilla JavaScript version of this effect for those who are interested. Alright, let's dive into the code. To save us some time, I've already set up a fresh Next.js project and have it running locally. Let's start by clearing out the default boilerplate so we can have a clean slate to work with. First, I'll open up global CSS file and remove all the default styles. I'll do the same with page model CSS file, wiping it completely so we are starting from scratch. Next, I'll head over to the home page component and remove all the placeholder markup that comes with the template. Now we can begin structuring the page. We won't need much here, just a simple layout to begin with. I'll create a section with the class name hero and inside that, I'll add a div with the class hero image to hold our background image. I'll also include some placeholder text so the page doesn't look empty while we build. That's it for the basic markup. Now let's add our assets, the images for both the trail effect and the hero section. Inside the public folder, I'll drop in the main hero image, then I'll create a new folder named trail images and paste in 20 images for the trail effect. You can add more or fewer images depending on your requirement. With that, our setup is complete. Time to move on to styling. I'm starting by importing a clean monospaced font from Google Fonts. Then I'm applying a global reset, clearing out default spacing and ensuring consistent box sizing across all elements. For the background, I'm going with a deep, dark tone to give the layout a sleek, minimal look. Images are styled to fully cover their containers while maintaining their aspect ratio so they scale and crop cleanly. For the paragraph text, I am keeping it small, uppercase, and styled with the monospaced font we just imported. Moving on to the layout, the hero section takes up the entire viewport and uses flexbox to center everything perfectly in the middle. Overflow is hidden, so nothing spills outside the bounds. Inside that, the hero image sits in the background with low opacity. Above that sits the trail container. This takes up the full space and acts as the stage where our animated trail images will appear and move around. Now let's talk about how each trail image is structured. Every trail item we create will have two key layers. The first is the mask layer. This is where we'll apply our animated clip paths. This layer starts completely hidden and then animates open in vertical stripes to reveal the image in a sort of Venetian blind effect. Sitting inside the mask layer is the image layer. This holds the actual background image and also handles the fade out. When the trail image starts disappearing, we reduce its opacity to give it that soft fade effect you saw in the demo. So while the mask layer controls the reveal, the image layer takes care of the exit transition and together they create the smooth trail animation that follows the cursor. With all the styling and logic in place, we are now ready to move on to the JavaScript and build the interaction. Inside the source directory, I'll start by creating a new folder called components. This is where we'll keep our reusable parts and inside it, I'll create a new component called trail container. In this component, I'll start by adding the use client directive since we'll be using React hooks and browser-specific APIs. 
Next, I am setting up a basic functional component using the use ref hook. This reference will point to our main trail container div, the element where all the animated trail images will appear. At the moment, the component just returns a single div with the class trail container and we'll be building on this shortly. Now let's head back to the home page and import this component. I am placing it right inside the hero section, but this component is completely self-contained, so you can use it inside any other section or layout if you prefer. Alright, with that setup, let's go back to the trail container component and start defining the logic for the image trail animation. We'll start by setting up a use effect which runs when the component mounts. This is where we'll define everything related to the trail animation from configuration settings to utility functions. First, I'm creating a config object that holds all the important timing values for the animation. We'll define how long each image should stay on screen, how far the mouse needs to move before a new trail image is created, and how long the reveal and fade out transition should take. We are also including a few stagger values. These control the delay between each slice of the mask layer animating in or out. So the reveal happens in a ripple-like motion instead of all at once. And finally, we define some easing curves to make sure the motion feels smooth and natural. Next, I am setting the total number of trail images we want to cycle through. In this case, I am going with 20. Then, using a small utility, we generate an array of image paths, basically building a list image URLs from our trail images folder. Now, I grab a reference to the trail container using the ref we set up earlier. If that reference isn't ready for some reason, we simply return early. After that, we check if the user is on desktop by looking at the screen width. We only want to run this effect on larger screens since it's really not meant for mobile. Then we define a couple of utility functions under an object called MathUtils. The first one is LERP, which stands for linear interpolation. We'll use this to smooth out the mouse position later so the trail doesn't just snap to the cursor. Instead, it will gently follow it. The second utility is a simple distance function. It calculates how far the mouse has moved between frames. We'll use this to decide when it's time to create a new trail image. Next, we define a function called getMouseDistance that uses this utility to return the current distance between the actual mouse position and the last recorded one. And finally, we create a helper called isInTrailContainer. This checks if the mouse is still inside the area we want to animate, in this case, the full hero section. It uses the bounding box of the container and compares it to the current mouse position. This whole setup is just about gathering the values and tools we'll need to actually run the animation. And in the next step, we'll start putting it all into motion. Let's move on and begin building the function that creates the trail images. This is what gives life to the effect when we move the mouse. I am calling this function create trail image. First, we create a new dev element. This will act as the container for a single trail image. We assign it a class, so it will have a style we defined in CSS. Then we grab the next image from our list using the current index and cycle through the array by incrementing that index. This way, each new trail gets a different image, looping back around once we reach the end. Next, we calculate where to place this image on the screen. To do that, we get the bounding box of the trail container and subtract the offsets. This makes sure the image appears exactly under or near the cursor, not somewhere offset. We use both the current and interpolated mouse positions here so we can animate from one to the other. Once we have the starting position, we apply it to the image container. We also set a transition so that it smoothly slides from its starting point to the current cursor position. Now comes the interesting part, the layered reveal. Inside each image container, we create multiple mask layers, in this case, 10 of them. And inside each mask layer, we insert the image layer that holds the actual image. We do this so that we can animate each slice of the image separately. These layers are stacked vertically like plants. At the start, each slice is fully collapsed, basically invisible, because we are using a clip path that compresses it into a vertical line. We also apply a transition to the clip path so that when it animates open, it does so smoothly. Once all the mask layers are created, we append the full trail image to the main container in the DOM. Now, to actually trigger the movement and animation, we use request animation frame. We update the final position of the image container to match the cursor which creates that smooth slide. Then we loop through each mask layer and animate them open one by one. 
we calculate a small delay for each slice based on how far it is from the center. This gives us that clean staggered ripple effect. Finally, we store this trail image in a list with its element and timing info so we can later remove it when it's no longer needed. So to sum it up, this function builds one complete trail image made of stacked slice, slides it into place, animates each slides to reveal the image and queues it for the cleanup later. Now that we are creating trail images, we also need a way to remove them, otherwise they'll just keep piling up in the DOM. So let's create a function called remove old images. This function checks if there are any trail images currently on the screen. If not, it simply returns. If there are, it looks at the oldest one, the very first image in the queue, and checks if it has reached its expiration time. We said that earlier when the image was created using the image lifespan value from our config. If the image has lived out its time, we start the exit animation. We loop through all the mask layers of that image and just like we did when revealing them, we now collapse them back in, but this time inward toward the center. Each slice animates back into a vertical line using a clip path transition but with a slightly different staggered logic that makes it look like the image is folding inward. We also fade out the image layer beneath which gives us a smooth fade out while the slices are closing. Then after the full animation is finished, we remove the image from the DOM completely so now we are handling both the entrance and the exit, making sure every trail image cleans up after itself. Next, let's talk about the render function. This is the loop that drives the animation frame by frame. First, we check if we are on a desktop screen. If not, we simply skip everything since this effect is meant for larger viewports. Then we calculate the distance the mouse has moved since the last trail image was created. We also update the interpolated mouse position. This is where we smooth out the motion using linear interpolation or lerp. Instead of snapping directly to the cursor, we ease it toward it which gives the trail that fluid sliding behavior. Once that's updated, we check if the mouse is moved far enough and if the cursor is still inside the animation area. If both conditions are true, we go ahead and create a new trail image. Then we update the last recorded mouse position so we can use it for the next distance check. Right after that, we call our cleanup function to remove any images that have expired. Finally, we schedule the next frame using request animation frame so this whole process keeps running smoothly in a loop. This render loop is the heart of the animation. It consistently checks where the mouse is, decides whether to show a new image, fades out the old ones and keeps everything moving in sync. Next, we'll hook this loop into the event listeners and finish wiring everything up. We'll begin with the start animation function. This function first checks if we are on a desktop. If not, it exits right away. If we are, it adds a mouse move event listener to the document. This listener keeps updating the current mouse position every time the mouse moves, so we can use that in our render loop. Then we kick off the animation by calling request animation frame and passing in the render function. This is what gets everything moving. We also return a cleanup function that removes the mouse move event listener. We'll call that later when the animation stops or the component unmounts. Next, we define stop animation. This cancels the animation frame if it's running and sets the reference to null. It also loops through all remaining trail images on the screen and removes them from the DOM to fully clean up the effect. Now we need to handle what happens when the window is resized, especially if someone switches between mobile and desktop sizes. That's where handle resize comes in. We check whether the current screen is considered desktop and compare that to the previous state. If we have just switched to desktop, we start the animation. If we have switched away from desktop, we stop the animation and clean the mouse event listener. Right after that, we declare a variable called cleanup mouse listener so we can store that cleanup function and use it later. We also attach the resize event listener to the window so it keeps checking on every resize event. And finally, we check once at the start if we are already on desktop when the component loads. We immediately start the animation. At the very end, inside the return statement of the use effect, we clean everything up, stop the animation, remove any active listeners, and clear out the resize event handler. This makes sure that everything is properly managed when the component unmounts or when the user switches devices. And that wraps up the full logic for the image trail effect. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.